today we're working on smoothing out the roof on the square back. If you can't tell, I'm actually in a new garage because I moved again. I'm really stoked on this new place. I'll tell you more about it later. Let's get into it. All right, so I blocked out this dent and it's looking pretty good. I'm ready to start going around the roof and just getting the rest of the dents. And then I can try to kind of block everything out more as a whole. If you remember, we have this patch right here, which very obviously needs some filler on it. And then I also have a low spot right here and then a matching one on the opposite side. I hammered them out best I could. Should just need some skim coat and then we should be in good shape. All right, we're scuffed down with 80 grit and wiped it down with rubbing alcohol. I'm just leaving the primer on this low spot here. I don't feel like taking it down to bare metal. Everything I've read on the forums says you can get away with putting it on epoxy primer as long as you scuff it, even though the spec sheet recommends putting it on bare metal. I've definitely done it on epoxy primer before and haven't had any issues, so I'm just gonna run it that way. I don't wanna keep chasing this thing grinding off the paint and then repainting it over and over again during this process. So it looks like we're ready to lay down some filler. ready to mix things up. I just read the spec sheet on this and it basically says just to put your filler on your spreadsheet and then just add a little bit of this as needed to get it to the consistency that you want. So I'm gonna put my filler down. I'm just gonna slowly add some of this and then I'm just gonna bring the camera straight over here so that once I add hardener and it starts to go off, I'm already rolling and I don't have to mess with the camera. What a fail. As you might be able to see, I didn't get to spread the filler nearly as far as I meant to spread it because I accidentally overcooked it with the hardener. I just made the mistake of adding too much hardener. The problem was after I added all the plastic honey, the puddle of filler was really, really big. I just eyeballed it by the size of the puddle, but what I should have done is just thought about what size the puddle of filler was before I added plastic honey because a four inch diameter puddle of rage only needs a ribbon all the way across. By the time I added the plastic honey, it was probably an eight inch wide puddle of filler. So I had like twice as much activator in there and it just went off immediately. I was all stoked. It was nice and smooth. It felt like it was gonna spread pretty well. And then by the time I started laying it on the car, it just, it just went off just immediately. So, Kind of a big fail, but I mean, these things happen. I'm learning this product. I'm gonna have to sand this out and then we'll come back and we'll do it again and we'll add less activator and <laughs> hopefully get it right. All right, so I have a lot of sanding to do to finish up the car and my folks very graciously gave me their old orbital sander. All I need to do is replace this pad because the hook and loop system kind of wore out and these sanding discs just fall off. So I went to the hardware store and I actually keep these in stock. This is probably 25 years old, but looks like it uses the same standard palm sander pad. Let's try to get this on there.
That was great. It took about five minutes to knock that down with 40 grit on the orbital. Probably would have taken me like 15 minutes doing this by hand with a block. I'm just gonna grab my longer block and hit it with 80 grit just to finish kind of smoothing it out, but I feel like that saved me a ton of time. I'm really stoked, really glad. I just got this, thanks mom and dad. You guys really hooked it up. quick if you're enjoying this video and you want to follow along with the rest of the build consider hitting like and subscribe and also if you want to drop a comment i will get back to you all right let's try this again i have rage gold i have my plastic honey i have my hardener my spreaders let's mix it up and hopefully be able to spread over a larger area i'm gonna remember to put a four inch diameter blob on this sheet and then make sure I only use four inches of hardener, not eight or whatever I used last time, because that definitely didn't work out for me. Finally, this actually went really well. I feel like I've always had a hard time spreading filler over a large surface area. And this time using the plastic honey, I just made sure to use the right amount of activator and it actually went pretty well. I think it delayed the set time a little bit, but more than that, it thinned it out so it made it easier to spread over a large area. In the past, I feel like I've only been able to work really small areas of filler, so that was a relief. <laughs> so that was a relief. I'm really glad that worked out. It's time to sand this out. My only gripe is that when I was doing some cleanup, scraping away some stray filler, I accidentally nicked this right here and it was already setting up so I couldn't really fix it as well as I wanted. But other than that, I'm like really happy with this. This is great. Real quick, I wanna give you guys a rundown on the new space. It was hard to leave the old spot. I really, really liked it, but this spot is gonna be great for a lot of reasons. And one of them is because this is my first time not having a shared garage, which is great. I'm so stoked. One of the previous owners a long time ago had a workshop in here. So there are a bunch of outlets and they already had 220 for the air compressor. My cooling run fit perfectly between these two shelves that were already installed. In addition to that, there was also already a giant workbench. Mostly I just had to paint, do some minor sheetrock repairs, and put up lighting. And then this place was in pretty good shape. Anyways, I'm really excited to work in here now, and very excited to put out more videos and finish up the square back, finally, in this garage.
All right, I'm all prepped for one more skim coat. I'm gonna try to get down into the drip rail a little bit more this time because that area needs a little bit of work. Fingers crossed the plastic honey goes well again this time. Let's see how it goes. I chopped one of these filler spreaders in half and rounded one edge so that hopefully I can have a bit of an easier time getting down into this drip rail. As you guys can see, it's kind of a tight fit in there. I also don't want to get too much filler up on this folded edge because that's gonna be a real pain to sand later. Also, as you guys can obviously see, I put some uh, masking tape up here so that I can just peel this off right after laying down filler. And hopefully that saves me a little bit of cleanup time. I fully forgot to hit record on the camera. I got so wrapped up mixing up the filler and adding the plastic honey. I forgot to hit record, so filler's already laid down and cured. Time to sand it. Alright, so that last layer of filler sanded out okay, but I still have a few low spots. So for now, I just want to spot check this, get it looking good, and then we'll address the entire roof. Let me show you guys what I was using to sand out that filler. I had just my little, uh, just a piece of a paint stick, and I just wrapped some 80 grit around it so I could get a really narrow edge that helps get down in the drip rail. These are soft blocks and they come in different shapes and this fits like perfectly down into the drip rail as well. And then just my rigid Dura block with 80 grit. That's what I've been using after knocking it down with 40 grit on the orbital sander. This is looking good. I was gonna end the video right here, but I decided that was kind of a cop out because the rest of the roof still needs a little bit of work. I have a little bit of a low spot right here. And then over here on the opposite side, we have kind of a matching low spot, similar to what we have on the top of the roof over there. So today I really just wanna push through and get filler on these low spots and get this thing looking nice and smooth. And also, just in case you guys didn't notice, I hung up 
some tarps over all my shelving. Just trying to kind of cover everything up. Trying to do the adult thing because this orbital sander just flings dust everywhere. So we have a problem. Some of this filler is not curing all the way. It's possible I mixed in too much plastic honey, but what I think happened is that I used the bum tube of activator again. It did seem a little bit too liquidy. I needed it a bunch, I thought it would be fine. The filler over there feels pretty good, but this one, just the surface that hasn't been sanded feels a little bit squishy. Just to play it safe, I'm gonna take most of this down with like a 40 grit disc and start fresh. I don't wanna risk having a filler problem. That'd be such a bummer to do all this work and then, you know, just have it be trash because I didn't activate my filler properly. Definitely kind of annoying setback, but I'm just gonna to try to knock it out today, lay down the filler again, get it sanded out, and have this thing looking good. All right, this is the tube I was using. I'm just gonna check it out before I throw it away. See if it still looks kind of weird. Here's another tube. This is not as thin. I don't know what was going on there. So I went through all of my activators and five out of the six are bad. They're either too liquidy, super old and separated or dried up. I have one good tube. Once the paint shop opens back up, I'll go get a fresh big tube so I won't have to worry about bad activators anymore. So all the uncured filler is sanded off and I'm running my hand over it and looking at it and it actually looks better than it looked before. And I'm wondering if I don't need to glob a bunch more filler on there. I'm hoping that I'm within range for the spray poly, which I can use to cover basically the entire roof with a spray gun, which is gonna be a heck of a lot easier than me trying to spread filler over these really, really large portions of the roof. I feel like I was spinning my wheels a little bit trying to deal with these filler curing problems. So that's where we're gonna leave it for now. I don't think I need a ton more filler, but hopefully we're gonna come back really soon and lay spray poly down. All right, that's it today. Thank you for watching. I believe in you, get to wrenching, peace.